Hello, this is Matt Leonard for The Foundry, and in this video on Nuke 8, we're going to be looking at working with user tracks in the camera tracker. Now, user tracks can be placed manually rather than being automatically seeded by the camera tracker and can be used to improve or even replace the auto tracking data entirely. They can also be used to link unmatched reference frames together when tracking stills. Now you can create user tracks before tracking and solving to lock the camera to a particular part of the shot or afterwards to help improve the result. Okay, inside of Nuke, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to lay down our camera tracker. So we're going to come into our 3D menu and just grab the camera tracker here. Now what you'll notice is right at the very top of the view, we have this Add User Tracks button. And if we select that, we're now able to lay down a number of user tracks. We can also, if we want, come across to the user tracks menu and we could say add track here and you'll see that places a user track directly in the middle of the viewer. Alternatively, if I was to delete that, having selected it first, you could use the hotkeys control or command plus alt and then just click a user track down there as well. So three different ways of adding a user track directly into the footage. Now at the top of the viewer you'll notice that we have these three boxes with a green, orange and blue cross in them. The green indicates the reference frame and this is the first frame in the track which remains constant and this allows you to locate the feature more accurately in subsequent frames. The orange represents the playhead position, this is the current frame and we can use this window to adjust the tracking anchor on the current frame by comparing it with the reference frame so we can make sure that those two match when we're trying to keep our anchor in the right place. And then finally the blue is the keyframe and this is the first keyframe in the sequence and adding more keyframes adds a zoom window per keyframe. Now if we want we can click on a keyframe to jump to that position, so if I go to a different area I can click here and it jumps back to that particular keyframe and we can also zoom into this by holding down shift and you can see that I'm able to zoom in and out of the windows to compare it. If you then drag back to the middle you'll notice that that then goes back to its original position. Now over here in the properties panel you'll see that we have the name of the user track, so user1. We have its position in X and Y. We also have this S that tells us whether it's a survey point or not. And then the X, Y and Z basically tell you the position of that survey point. So we're not going to be looking at survey points in this video. So we're mainly interested in the name of the user track and its X and Y position within the viewer itself. Now if we want to we can delete a user track by simply coming down to delete tracks here. Now let's go ahead and add in a user track and actually track it through. So I'm going to come in again, I'm going to click on my user track button up here, I'm going to focus in on this sign and I'm going to just click maybe here at the bottom. From here, frame 1 in my timeline, I can come in and I can click auto track. You can see immediately that begins to track that feature. So we'll just let that finish and that will be now one user track complete. Okay, so if we zoom in and we jump to a number of frames, you can see it's doing a pretty good job even through the motion blur of hanging on to that particular point. Now in order to do a full solve we need a number of user tracks. In fact we need eight user tracks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to place eight of these and get them tracked and then we can see the result of doing that using our normal solve controls. Okay, now that's done, I could come in and actually have a look at what this looks like with my thumbnail here. So I could select user tracks, choose a user track and you can see at the bottom I can now see what's going on and I can actually scrub through by clicking with the mouse and dragging and I can also just click on a frame which will jump me directly to that frame. For the time being I'm just going to put this back to hidden and I'm going to click off. So I set 10 user tracks. Let's go back over to our camera tracker now and click the solve. So you can see that's gone through and I have a user error of 0.53 which isn't too bad. So let's see what we get. I'm going to come across to scene plus and create. Move my viewer down and let's have a look at what we get in our 3D. So I can frame in. I can see there are my points 
And if I zoom out a little bit and hit play, you can see there is my camera track based on those 10 user tracks that I put in place. Now let's return back to our camera tracker for a moment. Return back to our auto tracks and have a look at how we could do manual user tracking. Now this is a lot slower because you basically end up doing this by hand, but you can often get better results. So I would add a track. Let's turn off all these just for a moment so I don't see them. And then going to make sure I'm on frame one. And I'm going to move this, say, down to the bottom. You can see roughly where I've positioned it on this grate. And I can move around in this view to get it exactly where I want it. Maybe for this example it would be better just to move it up to this signpost so it's clearer where I'm placing it. You would then move on a few frames, maybe to frame 10, and we would reposition it by hand, getting it as close as we can. Remembering if we want to, we can use the shift key to zoom into the window. So we basically go through all of our frames like this. So once that's done, we can then put these back on just so we can see them. So I can come back and solve, and you can see that we now have a solve error of 0.5. So we've improved on it slightly, adding our new user track. Now if we want to, we can also add a user track based directly from our 2D tracker. So the way we would do that is we would add a 2D tracker, add it to the footage, and let's just focus in on that. We also just close up our camera tracker so we don't have anything in the view that we don't want to see at the moment. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to add a tracking point, let's say, just up here on this window. I can then go ahead and do a normal track. Wonderful. And we can see that goes through. We get a nice track the whole way through. I can return now to my camera tracker and I can use this tracking data in here. So I could add a new camera track here and I could simply come across and I could copy this data. So I'm going to copy the animation, right click and paste. Now you can see we've got that track here and when we move through the frames it matches what we have down here. So again I could turn to the camera tracker and again do an update solve. Now finally in my user tracks you'll notice that I can also import and export tracks. So for instance if I really like this particular track 12 I could export it and we could save that out so that you could use it again. And this can be useful if you've done an auto track and you know that one or two of the auto tracks are really solid and you want to use them for later. You can come in and you can export them and then you could import them back in afterwards. So that can be really useful. So this is probably as far as we want to go with this particular tutorial. So this has been Matt Leonard for The Foundry.